What are you worth? I'm not talking about monetary value here. I'm talking about the value you place on yourself as someone who is decent, kind and worthy. Someone who deserves to be treated with respect by others and by yourself. Today I'll be sharing what self-worth is and why it matters for improving your mental health and well-being. So let's talk about self-worth. Hi, I'm Jeremy Godwin and this is Better Mental Health. I had a total breakdown in 2011, followed by a few years of severe depression and anxiety, and now I talk about mental health full-time here and on my weekly podcast, Let's Talk About Mental Health. My content is all about practical advice based on quality research and my own personal experience. So the thing about self-worth is that sometimes the things we say to ourselves or we think about ourselves or the way we treat ourselves can just be really inconsiderate, offensive, and even downright nasty. Why does that happen? Often it's because we may not be feeling completely positive and confident in our sense of self-worth. So what is self-worth? If you look up the term self-worth in the dictionary, you'll see it listed as another term for self-esteem. And although they're definitely related, there are some specific differences between the two, or at least there are in psychology terms. I'm going to explain what I mean by quoting from positivepsychology.com, which featured this quote by Dr. Christina Hibbert. Self-esteem is what we think and feel and believe about ourselves. Self-worth is recognizing I am greater than all of those things. It is a deep knowing that I am of value, that I am lovable, necessary to this life, and of incomprehensible worth. Self-worth, self-esteem, self-respect, and self-confidence are all very closely related, and they effectively describe different sides of the same coin, because it's all about how you view yourself. Do you consider yourself to be a good person who is worthy of being treated respectfully by others as well as by yourself? Because it is that sense of worthiness that sets self-worth apart from everything else. It all comes down to whether or not you think you are deserving of kindness, love, belonging, and all the other good things in life. And most importantly, it means that you give yourself kindness, compassion, love, respect, dignity, and understanding. Unfortunately, we can sometimes become our own worst enemy in the sense that if we don't feel great about who we are or where we're currently at in life, we can wind up turning against ourselves. A while ago, I read a quote somewhere and I don't remember where, so if anyone knows where, let me know in the comments below. And the quote is, don't be your own bully. And as someone who was bullied mercilessly all throughout high school, that really resonated with me because the things we can say to ourselves can be just so incredibly unkind and even cruel sometimes. Why would we choose to bully ourselves? Healthy self-worth is about knowing that those types of thoughts are just simply not true, and instead being able to focus on your good qualities. So let's talk about why a healthy sense of self-worth is vital for your well-being. And I mean, hopefully it's obvious, but let me be blunt. If you can't feel good about yourself, life is probably going to feel a bit crap, isn't it? When your sense of self-worth is low, you can tend to do and accept things that are damaging to you. I'm talking about unhealthy relationships, addictive behaviors, engaging in risky behaviors, seeing yourself as a failure and so never trying to change things for the better. These are just some examples of the damaging consequences of low self-worth, and it's something that can often go hand in hand with conditions like depression. So the other thing I want to talk about here in terms of healthy versus unhealthy self-worth is about how you define your worthiness. So traditionally in the West, we've fallen into the trap of defining our success and our worth by factors like your job title, your salary, the size of the house you live in, your car, the clothes you wear, and so on. And all of these things are, in a word, rubbish. Because it sets up an expectation that you have to wear the right clothes or drive the right car in order to be worth something. And that is the biggest load of crap ever. You can be wealthy or well-educated and still be a total train wreck of a human being. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. A few years ago, someone trolled me with a fairly nasty message after I wrote a blog post where he commented that I had gained my degree from a regional university and so therefore, in his eyes, my degree and my opinions were subpar. First of all, that had nothing to do with me and everything to do with the type of person that he was. And secondly, it didn't diminish my sense of self-worth one bit because 
A, it's the quality of the education and not the location. And B, that actually completely dismissed the amazing accomplishment that I had achieved. In the middle of severe depression and anxiety, where I could barely leave the house for two years or so, I somehow managed to complete a full degree in psychology and sociology with great grades. Like, I didn't just scrape through, I actually did pretty well. And that's what matters, not what some ignorant idiot thought. And a quick note here, I really haven't been thinking about this guy's comments all of these years. I just wanted to share it because I think that it's a really Really good example of some of the ridiculous ways that people try to reduce your self-worth based on what they think is worthy versus not worthy. So my general approach to life is this. What other people think of me has nothing to do with me. I focus on doing no harm, being kind and giving more than I take. And that is what helps me to see my self-worth. And more importantly, to be driven by internal factors rather than caring what other people think about me. That's how you learn to feel better about yourself. And that's something that I talked about in this video where I explored insecurity. You'll find it linked in the description below. It is absolutely possible to improve and maintain your sense of self-worth with time, effort, and perseverance. How do you do that? Well, that's what I explore in this video where I look at eight ways to improve your self-worth. So click the link to watch that next. And you'll find even more advice on managing your well-being in my weekly podcast, Let's Talk About Mental Health. It's linked in the description below. Thanks so much for joining me today. Take care and talk to you next time.